Transformers. <clears throat> uh, Transformer is a pair of windings magnetically coupled to one another. <clears throat> the soft iron core provides an easy path for the magnetic field surrounding both coils. The numbers of turns are usually a lot more numerous than depicted here at right. Uh, the two windings are labeled the primary and the secondary. You'll notice that contrary to how we read, uh, this particular diagram shows the primary to the right. <clears throat> Normally, we would show the primary to the left and secondary to the right. Remember Faraday's law of induction. An electromotive force or voltage is established in a coil then turns when the coil is subjected to a change in the magnetic flux of the coil. The EMF is equal to n the number of turns times the rate of change of the product of uh, the magnetic flux density times the area of the coil per unit time. Here the product BA is the cross-sectional area of the, of the coil multiplied by the flux density uh, of the magnetic field B. <coughs> the transformer operates as follows. <coughs> Excuse me. Current in the primary coil winding produces a magnetic field in accordance with Ampere's law. The magnetic field is coupled to the secondary coil. If the current in the primary chain changes, a voltage develops across the secondary winding in accordance with Faraday's law. It is important to note that a constant current in the primary winding produces no voltage or current in the secondary. Voltage across the secondary can be induced only by a changing magnetic field. Turns ratio. <clears throat> we must conclude from the preceding discussion that transformers are most, most often used in AC circuits. This is true, although a special class of transformers is used to wave shape small digital and analog signals in electronics. You don't see these very often. Transformers cannot supply electrical energy, but they can be used to trade voltage for current and vice versa. It turns out that the ratio of the number of windings in the primary input to the number of windings in the secondary output determines the ratio of input voltage to output voltage and the ratio of output current to input current. The diagram on the next slide presents this relationship. And here are the equations at the top, and here is a diagram. Um, here's an example. Um, we want to make uh, 24 volts AC, um, probably for um, uh, to run some things at a, at a lower voltage. Uh, I know that a lot of uh, control mechanisms are run at 24 volts because it's a safe voltage or relatively safe voltage. To accomplish this, use a primary to secondary turns ratio of 120 over 24, which is 5 to 1. The output would then be 24 volts AC. The output current will be 24 divided by 50, or 0.48 amperes AC. And the input current will be one fifth times that 0.48 or 96 milliamps AC. The input resistance then is like 50 ohms squared. So it's 120 divided by 0.096 divided, um, which is equal to 1250. So that means that you can get a relatively high, if you look back at those equations, you'll see that 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 the ratio of input impedance to output impedance is proportional to n squared. 